So today we are looking at Amiga Game Selector 2.5. This release uh, came out back in December 2023, which is actually just a few weeks ago. So in this setup guide, in general showcase of this really cool system, I'm going to be showing you how to extract it, how to go into full screen modes, and I'm going to be showing you what it's got to offer, including configuring your controller through WinUAE, which is what it's operated by. I'm also going to be going through the desktop mode of this, which is pretty much a mod modernized version of Workbench and like I say if you're into Amiga emulation and you want an easy route into playing all the Amiga classics by far Amiga Game Selector 2.5 is the best way to go for this so check this one out. <laughs> Okay, for our start today's little showcase for the latest Amiga Game Selector 2.5, just make sure to hit notifications, subscribe and like if you like the video today. It really helps my channel out a great deal. Plus, it gets you retro emulation content every day as I release it, especially Commodore. That's my biggest passion here on my channel, and a lot of you are probably aware of that by now. So we got different versions of Amiga Game Selector 2.5, which actually released a couple of weeks ago in December uh, 2023. So we got different releases of this for different platforms. And obviously this one is going to be the WinUAE version, which is for Windows PC. You also find that you can run this on the A500 Mini or the Amiga Mini, as well as Raspberry Pi and a couple of other platforms. So a lot of you have been asking, what's the easiest route? into playing Amiga games in modern days. So very clearly this is going to be Amiga Game Selector. Everything is self-contained and it's very easy to set up. So what we're going to do is download the WinUAE version or AGSUAE 2.5. So if I just go into my AGS folder which I've just downloaded we'll see that this is 13 gigabyte in size. And you're also going to find that it comes in an archive. So we're just going to right click on that archive. And I'm using WinRAR and I'm going to extract it. And this is going to take a few minutes. But everything that we need is within this package. So just give it a couple of minutes and wait for this to extract. Once that's finally extracted, what we're going to do is just open up this. So, ags underscore launcher dot xe, double left click. And this is going to bring up a fancy Amiga game selector window. If we just go to launch ags, and you might find that it's on the side of your screen like we can see here on mine. So, what I'm going to do is by pressing Alt and Tab simultaneously on my keyboard. I'm going to just exit out of this window because our cursor is trapped in there. So simply exiting out of the program and reopening it, the window issue should then be sorted out. So let's just open this up again, launch AGS. And here we go. So it's no longer on the side of the screen as it was just a minute ago. Okay, so this is the main interface and what you're going to find straight away is that your controller doesn't work. So in order to configure your controller, it's very simple. If you just use uh, the cursor buttons on your keyboard, just scroll all the way down to options. And then we're going to go down to open the emulator option. And this is going to bring up WinUAE, which is powering all of this. And then from here, we're just going to go over to game ports. And under port 2, I'm going to find my Xbox One for Windows controller. If I just left click on this one and leave port 1 to Windows mouse, what I'm going to do is just go down to OK. Now, if I use my Xbox controller, it's working and I'm using D-pad as well as my left analog stick. And that's what's going to be able to control this very easily. So this is Amiga Game Selector then, and from here we can do many different things. If we go up to emulators at the top of this menu, uh, we're going to find emulators actually within here. So we got Amstrad CPC, C64, MSX, 
uh, Scum VM, Sega Genesis or Sega Mega Drive, uh, Sega Master System, and some ZX Spectrum. I'm going to just go to C64, my favorite. And in here, we got lots of different C64 games. If we just open one of these up at random, so apart from the Amiga base, there's also lots of different 8-bit systems in here, such as this one. If I press escape on my keyboard, that's going to bring us back out. And if I just go to quit, that's going to bring us back into Amiga Game Selector. If I come out of here, let's check out Amstrad CPC. So we can start the Amstrad CPC emulator from here. And if we go down to MSX, we can start MSX emulator. Uh, Scum VM. Again, we can start Scum VM. And it's some really cool features. So ZX Spectrum in particular, it's got plenty of games just here. So same process, just open up your game. So Alf, Wondershed, and Monty. And this is going to boot up. So again, just by pressing escape on my keyboard, I'm going to go to quit. Yes. And back into Amiga Game Selector we are. So plenty of things here just beside Amiga games. So let's take a look at Amiga itself. So we got extra games. And bear in mind, this is a new version of Amiga Game Selector 2.5. So uh, from 2.4, this one's got extra games included and just general bug fixes so under zero we got some games there uh, under e we got some more games plenty there and we got a favorites category where we can add favorites into this section if we want to and here's our main section so games zero to z if we go in here we then got the alphabet of amiga games let's just go to c for example we got all of these games and amiga cd32 games complete with screenshots uh, plenty there. It really is a great system, uh, including classics like the Chaos Engine, and I presume games like Lionheart is also in this package as well. So F, uh, like I say, it's pretty much all the Amiga games. As you can see, there is a lot here to play if you're an Amiga fan. Uh, we got G, just lots of goodness here. So let's actually try and run one of these. So let's go for Gods, which is undeniably one of the Amiga classics by Bitmap Brothers. So these are also in WHD load format, which means we don't need to mess around with .adf files. So these are all self-contained within a single file. So no more swapping disks. To exit out of this, I'm just going to press F12 on my keyboard, and you'll notice that the window size, the game screen, isn't quite right. So once we're in the Win UAE window just here, we can actually go to Display, and we can actually configure the window settings from here. So under Native, I'm going to go to Full Screen.
And as you can see, we've now got a proper full screen display. And right near the bottom, we got various different options here, but one of them to look at is themes. If we go to themes, we can change how the layout of Amiga Game Selector works. So let's just go to say Amiga OS. And here's our previews of the themes. So let's just choose Workbench uh, 1.3 version 2. Press enter, and that's going to change how the theme for Amiga Game Selector looks. And we can even change the color of the themes from I mean, there's so much to do on this release. And something really cool, which a lot of people is going to like a lot, just like I like, is once we're here in the Amiga Game Selector, if we just press Escape, this is going to bring us into Workbench, which is obviously a modernized Workbench version. From here, we can go into the games and we'll find all our games just here. So we got zero to Z again, and it's just another fancy way of experiencing Amiga, almost like a modern version of Amiga OS. And we can open up games from here. So to open up games from a uh, workbench just here, if we just open up one of the folders, you'll find AGS and the name of the game. If you just double left click on that, it's gonna boot us into the game, just like it would a minute ago in Amiga Game Selector. We also got an extra drive just here, and this is going to contain the emulators that we looked at just a minute ago. So if we go to emulators, uh, you'll find everything just here. And it looks like we got a couple more just here, such as uh, Beep, which I'm guessing is a BBC Micro emulator. And it looks like it is. So let's just start this at Curiosity and start emulation. So I'm not too familiar with uh, getting this working through this system. So let's just exit out of Beep. We also got DOSBox just here, which is pretty interesting. Very cool stuff. But like I said, I'm not too familiar how to work this through Amiga Game Selector. So I'm a little bit clueless at this point with this part. And if we go into the workbench drive just here, we can then play around with how this looks. So for example, if we go into preferences, you're going to find lots of different applications here. Font applications, Picasso, screen mode. So let's take a look at screen mode. And right now this is in uh, 1080p, 32-bit. If we go down a little bit, we can actually change how this looks. So let's go to use. And there you go. So terrible, it looks terrible. But the point is we can actually change how the presentation looks through correct settings. So screen mode. And I'm gonna pop this one back onto how it was by default, which was 1080p, 32-bit. And we got lots of different applications at the bottom just there are shortcuts more than anything. So let's just open up this one just there. This is iGame Launcher, and we can launch our games from here. So if we just go to Games Only, yes. And here we go. We have now got iGame Selector whilst we're running the workbench. Really cool, awesome stuff. We've also got Dopus Directory. So those familiar with Amiga, you'll understand what Dopus is. And we've even got a web browser built into this package. So I'd be at the bottom, open that up, and let's search for something like YouTube. And there we go. So great primitive stuff, but the options there, if you need a hit for anything, and quit. And if you want to exit out of here and just go into Amiga Game Selector again, then you can just go to AGS at the bottom, and that's going to bring us back here. And that's it for Amiga Game Selector 2.5. Uh, like I say, just be mindful that there's various different versions for this, such as uh, the version for Raspberry Pi, uh, the Amiga 500 or Mini Amiga. Uh, so just make sure you actually download the AGS UAE version and you'll be fine. But anyways, if you liked today's video, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming content. And if you're interested in Amiga emulation, like I say, I've got plenty of different Amiga emulation emulation guides in my playlist for micro emulation as well as front end guides also be sure to join me on social media i'm on facebook instagram tiktok and twitter but anyways until next time enjoy it and stay retro